assume most of you are here because you have just found out that you're moving to Germany. So first off, congratulations. That's super exciting. You're about to experience some of the most exciting adventures of your life. Welcome to the community. <laughs> if you are interested in information like pros and cons of each neighborhood, specifics of each kind of apartment layout and things like that, then stick around for after the house tour because I'm going to cover a lot of that stuff. But if you're just here because you want to see what it looks like, then welcome to my home. walk in you walk straight into this little entryway you've also got these coat closets whenever you walk in which is really nice I'm not gonna open it for you because ours is a complete disaster but I'm also gonna show you some before pictures just for comparison so when you walk in that's where we came from this is by far the most unfortunate part of the entire apartment. The kitchen is just so small. I mean, we've been in smaller kitchens before. I know that those exist. Like, that's it. Like, I had to get pretty creative when it came to uh, coming up with space. We don't have any pantry. That lazy Susan is where I have to keep almost all of our food. This is it. Don't get excited, these countertops did not come with the apartment. Like, it's just contact paper. I also painted just that little section of wall with black chalkboard paint. I will have to paint over that whenever we leave. I really hated this bar thing whenever we first moved in. It just seemed so inconvenient. It took up so much of the living space, but it ended up working out because like I said, you kind of have to be creative when it comes to storage. I had Jake install these little curtains. I went to Ikea and just got this cheap little shelf and that's where I keep all my pots and pans. All right, so moving into the dining area. So there was a door here, but it kind of cut all this space out and it wasn't usable. So once we took it off, we put our bar cart there and it's great. We've got a nice size living room. I am super happy with it. It fits our massive love sack sectional. And this is my favorite part of our apartment. Not every apartment has a balcony. Oh my gosh, I've been completely oblivious this whole time. My neighbor lives in one of those buildings over there and she says there's just been like faulty wiring that's been making the alarms go off. No one actually has fires. The fire trucks do have to come every time that the faulty wiring triggers the alarm. We're gonna start with the master bedroom area. We have a king size bed and it fits everything great. We've got two large nightstands. We've got a dresser with a TV and that's the closet situation. The bathrooms on posts do not have under sink storage and that's like a common thing in Germany apparently. So I bought this hall bench actually from Ikea and put it together and just put it underneath the sink. That was before I learned that they also sell regular under sink storage cabinets. We have one in our guest bath so you'll see an example of what that looks like. And laundry is in the master bath. A long hallway. This is the guest bath. Pretty good size. There's just one sink in here. This is the under sink storage cabinet I was telling you about. No ma'am. <laughs> this is a much bigger shower. This is actually where I take all of my showers. So the biggest of the spare bedrooms, it's pretty much the exact same size as the master. It's really big. This is a queen size bed so it looks even bigger in here. This is where Jake keeps all of his clothes. He doesn't keep it as nice and tidy as I do mine. I think it's got like one less closet. All right, in the second spare room, we just turned it into like a gym. This is a lot smaller than the other two bedrooms, but you could still comfortably put a twin size bed in here. So that's pretty much it. That's the entire apartment. Uh, though there's a linen closet right there. So, 
I hope you found that helpful. I wrote down some things that would have been really nice to know before I moved here, but if there's something that I didn't mention or if you have more questions, please leave a comment below and let me know what your questions are. Also, give me a thumbs up, let me know that you like this video and that you want to see more like it. I live in Crestview, which is one of the four neighborhoods that is considered on post housing. If you're coming here with your family, then you're going to live on post. The only people that get the option of living off post are Air Force, I believe and single soldiers and you're also considered a single soldier if you are coming here and leaving your family back in the states. I know that kind of seems a little backwards usually it's single soldiers that are required to live on post and family has to find housing elsewhere but I'm not here to question the rules just telling you what they are. Alright so the first neighborhood we're going to talk about is Clay Cassern. Clay Cassern is where all the units and offices are located so if you're a service member and you're going to be working every day then that's where you're going to be going. So they do have two different styles of of housing, there's stairwell housing, which when I say stairwell, it is just another word for apartment. I don't know why it's called stairwell. I don't know if it's like a German thing, but stairwell equals apartment. There's also a neighborhood called Newman Village. It's definitely the nicest housing development that Wiesbaden has to offer. The homes are probably the biggest. Newman Village is where you'll find yards, like nobody else has a yard, like a designated yard, and garages. Nobody else really has a garage either. However, the downside of Claycaster and Newman Village is that you are the furthest from downtown. And that's just relative to the other three neighborhoods. I mean, you're still only a 10 minute drive from downtown, but when you could walk there, it kind of seems like an eternity. Newman Village is mostly field grade officers. Now, the stairwell apartment on Claycaster is a mixed bag. You can be enlisted, you can be an officer, high, low ranking, tons of different people live on Claycaster. And as far as the stairwell goes, there are two bedroom, one bath apartments, and four bedroom, two bath apartments. So there are plenty of different styles to choose from. Also, you have to have ID card access to get onto Clay Housing. And I mention that because two out of the four housing developments are considered open neighborhoods and you don't actually have to scan your ID to get behind the gate. There's no gate actually. The next neighborhood we'll talk about is Heinerberg. It is much closer to downtown. You could actually walk to downtown, which is really nice, but you do have to have ID card access, just like Clay. This is where the PX is located. The commissary is here. There are two different schools. I think it's the, mil the middle school and the high school are located on Heinerberg, and there's a dog park, and all the resource offices are there as well. So there's a ton of different stuff right at your doorstep if you live on Heinerberg. I believe that it's mostly enlisted personnel that live on Heinerberg. I think it's either E4 or E5 and below. I can't remember. But they're kind of going through a transition period, so there are still some random ranks that live on Heinerberg as well. It's only stairwell housing. I've never been in an apartment on Heinerberg, but from what I've heard, even if you take two apartments of the same floor plan, they look completely different. Some are huge, some are tiny. It's just going to be what's available whenever you move here and do your walkthrough. It's just luck of the draw, unfortunately. And that is kind of a common theme for all of the neighborhoods. So just know that, you know, a two bedroom, one bath on Crestview is gonna look different than a two bedroom, one bath on Heinerberg. It's gonna look different from Occam. And they'll even look different within their own neighborhood. Unfortunately, I can't give you a definite, this is how big the three bedroom, two bath are. I mean, my three bedroom, two bath looks completely different than a three bedroom, two bath I've been in in Occam. So that's just one of the frustrating things about the housing here. Anyways, back to my list. Yeah, so because everything is located on Heinerberg, if you don't want to purchase a car here, or if you have a family and you only have one car, it's really easy because your family member can walk to the commissary and the PX. And there's also a bus that runs between all the different neighborhoods. So if you wanted to leave the car for your spouse, you could take the bus to work. The downside of Heinerberg is that it's very busy. There's always traffic. There's always just a ton of people. It kind of makes walking your dog a little stressful and it's noisy. But like I said, it's close to downtown. It's close to those military resources. The next neighborhood we'll talk about is Occam. Occam has two different style housing, just like Clay Cassern. So they also have some townhome style 
homes and they also have sterile housing. Occam tends to be the most popular option because it's got really nice housing. It's probably the second nicest housing, second to Newman Village, and it's very close to downtown. You could walk to downtown from Occam as well. It's got the elementary school and it's one of the open neighborhoods, so you don't have to scan your ID to get there. It's also got tennis courts and a dog park and things like that, so I mean, it, it is very nice. The only thing about Occam is that it's also very busy because it's probably the largest of maybe Heineberg is larger but Occam is a huge housing development there's so many people that live in that small area and it's also got the schools so you've got traffic you've got little kitties running around you can live in Occam if you are an officer or an NCO the townhomes unfortunately are usually reserved for high-ranking officers with large families it is very difficult to get into one of those townhomes so do not get your hopes up do not think that you're gonna come here and get that because there is a long waiting list for those more than likely you are going to be in an apartment just go ahead and get that in your head no matter what your rank like I know lieutenant colonels that live in stairwells as opposed to the townhomes so just be prepared for that the last neighborhood that we're gonna talk about is Crestview I'm going to start with the negatives and then end on the positives. So Crestview is kind of the joke of the four different housing developments because it is by far the most outdated and run down. It almost looks like you're driving onto the set of The Walking Dead. Half of the buildings are actually abandoned. Like there's one across the street that has a tree literally growing on the balcony because it's just been unused for so long. So yeah, Crestview is definitely the housing development's problem child. Usually people don't want to live here. All right, enough with the negatives. Now, let me tell you why I actually love Crestview. As someone who doesn't have any kids and who frequently walks her dog and takes her dog out to play. I love Crestview because it's not busy. It is like a third of the size of Occam and we don't have any resources like schools or offices or the PX and commissary. So there's no reason to be in our neighborhood if you don't live here. And I just, I love that. Like I feel like I can safely walk Cardi around. We don't have, you know, traffic in our neighborhood and because half of the buildings are abandoned there's just not as many people that live here so like I said our apartment is really outdated and that's not to say all of the apartments on Crestview are as outdated as mine is like we have a very good friend who lives in, in an apartment two buildings over and is definitely way more updated than ours but you know as you saw in my house tour there are things that you can do to draw the attention away from those outdated things i haven't had an issue with the outdatedness really and the best part is i can walk downtown this is one thing that crestview has that none of the other neighborhoods have if you don't want to walk downtown because there is a hill right outside of crestview is a main bus stop that goes right into the heart of downtown so we take that all the time So I mentioned earlier that my apartment looks completely different from a three bedroom, two bath in Occam. The one in Occam is way more updated than mine is. It doesn't take much to be more updated than my apartment, but, oh, and they have a much bigger kitchen. The kitchen is really nice and they have a good size living. They have an actual designated dining room. Like it's a completely different floor plan, even though we have the same three bedroom, two bath layout, but their bedrooms are tiny. When maybe that doesn't matter to you. Maybe the updates are worth the sacrifice of a smaller bedroom. But yeah, they have a king size bed and they hardly have any room for a nightstand in there. So those are just like, just because you're getting an updated apartment doesn't necessarily mean that it's better all around. There are, there are pros and cons to each neighborhood. Every floor plan is extremely different. Yeah, so I hope this was helpful. I hope I was able to give you some information that you haven't been able to find elsewhere. Like I said before, let me know if there's anything else you want to know and yeah, good luck with your move.